Hello folks, welcome back. I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. I'm sorry I was away for a little bit. Um, I don't know, the holidays, for some reason, just take something out of you. And I actually switched chairs because, well, I don't know if you can see it, but over here, this is a chair that's going to be tossed. The pneumatics on this thing suck. The one I'm using is normally my office chair. This will get moved to this position. Although, I don't know, when, like sometime this week, I'm supposed to get my, my much better office chair. I'll figure out which one I'm going to put here. This just feels like a working chair, so. You know, it's pretty comfortable, though. Oh, yes, this isn't about my comfort. Um, unfortunately, there's a little sad news. Um, I hate to start shows off this way. Pat Patterson passed away. Um, I forget how old he was. He's up there. Remember, I want to say, I forget if him or Jerry Briscoe were one of the first, was like the, actually the first intercontinental champion. I don't know. Pat Patterson, world just, the world just became a smaller place without you, sir. With my little tribute there, that being said, yeah, he was getting up there in age. I mean, it's not like he was a young spring chicken. He was a young spring chicken in the 60s and 70s, I think. That's okay. Again, I do apologize for having this show kind of really late. Um, Thanksgiving, any holiday always takes, I don't know, it just kind of saps you a little bit. It's an odd time. Schedules are thrown off. I'm still getting things. I'm still getting my head together for work. They're supposed to change our freaking work schedule too. That sucks. Although on my other job, because we're open later, I'm opening, which is good, which means I get to come home. And in fact, amazing news. Next week, I will be covering the Impact Special. And in fact, I'm going to go to the gym for the first time. A very long time on a Saturday. I need it. That's all that has to be said. I need it. Um, it'll give me a little bit more time. Actually, wow, I can clean the house too that day. Because that better needs to be freaking overhauled. And I ordered shh, my cat's Christmas gift. Um, I have to do some shopping tomorrow, so I have to. So I'll probably go to sleep right after I make this super combo video. So again, before I, well, let's talk about Monday Night Raw. But before I get into the wrestling, there are some very special people I have to thank. Help we. You, sir, have earned that six count.
<laughs> Drink my own piss. You, sir, might do that, but you're also a master of the air guitar. Mutta, you sir, just listening to your briefcase boombox. The bean, Frey Wyatt, you sir, can crawl out of here. Pistolario, 666, you, sir, always win by dirty pen. <laughs> and president-elect come, dog. You, sir, are just a member of the El Generico band. Well, let's get to some raw wrestling. Um, as you can tell, this is a non-adult beverage. This is actually my cranberry ginger ale. I still have a little bit less, le a little bit left. It is a remnant of kind of a big holiday feast. So, cheers! Again, this is the holiday times. It's that odd time where I like things like eggnog for a few weeks, um, cranberry stuff. Even though I do like cranberry juice. It's the only time of year they actually have like cranberry sodas and stuff. So I do like to partake in that stuff. Um, so let's talk about some... Wow, this chair is actually comfortable. And it actually holds a pneumatic thing, which is good. I can't wait till I get that new chair. Though. That'll make me feel so much better. Or if I lose a lot of weight, whichever happens first. But let's get to some Monday Night Raw. Um, it, this was actually a very entertaining show. I'll give it that much. Um, it seemed to go, the, the middle seemed to s slog on. Um, it started off really good. It was a moment of bliss with Randy Orton. If you haven't already seen the highlights, uh, Randy Orton talks about the arson on the shed. And then he's like, yeah, I know the fiends. I always find someone's weakness. He stares at Alexa Bliss. 
I found the fiend's weakness too. So then, of course, the lights go off. The fiend shows up, and Bray picks up Alexa Bliss in her arms. The fiend's terrified that Randy Orton and, and Randy Orton should RKO and punt Alexa Bliss. She they, like Alexa Bliss needs to be punished for getting married and, and well, not being available anymore. But yep, yeah. So obviously, Randy Orton's found the weakness of the new fiend. We hope to see him exploit that. Probably, I think, table, ladders, and chairs. Not this Sunday. I think it's next Sunday, the 13th, I think. I honestly have no clue. I just, like, I'm lucky if I know what things are. I'll get into schedules a little bit later, too. But, yeah, that should be good. It's either going to be table, ladders, and chairs. Because Randy Orton will probably be in the Royal Rumble. In some version, so we might see two Brays show up. That would be pretty. Actually, that'd be pretty neat if we have Bray Wyatt, the Fiend, and or Bray Wyatt, the Firefly Bray Wyatt, and the Fiend show up just like they did the three faces of Mick Foley when it was Cactus Jack, uh, Dude Love, and Mankind showing up. <sighs> also, it's gotten a little cold here. Dumb coronavirus. I had to go out in Hobo last night. I had to earn my keep. So, maybe I have a little bit of the sniffles. I don't turn the heat on. It's nothing terrible yet. It's getting old. Um, yes, and unlike some co-workers, you know who I'm talking about. I don't take off from work just because I have the sniffles. I have to be bleeding profusely from a major vein or artery and not be able to walk. And or like talking about hash browns, flip flops, and cheesesteaks, like in some incoherent fashion. Like if I say that the flip flops were doing, if I say the flip flops were doing hash browns all throughout Monday Night Raw, you know something's wrong with me. Yeah. Um. So actually, it was a pretty good start to the show. It was different. I like it. And then our first minute, they had Jeff Hardy and Elias recap. Eh. It was okay. It was a Symphony of Destruction match. Um, Jeff Hardy versus Elias. I hope. I really hope they, they end this though. This it's getting old. Um, Jeff Hardy starts off in high risk. However, he eats a big a big knee as he comes flying off. Um, they they wrestle a little bit more. Our Truth is hiding in the piano, and then oh god. Oh, the loser locker room comes out, and I feel so bad for Eric Rowe. I can understand why why um Lucha, uh, Lucha House parties in the loser locker room. Eric Rowe should never be near that loser locker room. Who else was that? Yeah, it, it's it's kind of sad. Drew Gulak's now been demoted to the loser locker room. Um, the only good news is Jeff and Elias beat up the loser locker room with guitars. That was actually kind of entertaining. I like that. Um, back in the ring after the break, Jeff gets in the ring. Again, his move set, the inverted atomic drop to the double leg drop to the basement drop kick. Again, pretty classic Jeff Hardy stuff. There we go. Um, after that, Jeff sent head first. Into one of the instruments, and we go. So you finally get to use the instruments. Elias loads the fist with guitar picks. Listen, if you're going to use any weapon, like a pair of brass knuckles, like if I put this pen here in my fingers, if I hit you with this, you better bleed. Jeff did not do the blade job. Shame on you, Jeff. Shame on you. I mean, everyone's chanting Blade, 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 Blade over there in Discord. That's probably where I got some of my chats from. But yeah, you wanted it. Yeah. If you're, if you're going to load up, you have to bleed. Um, then Elias uh, swung a uh, nailed Jeff Hardy with a guitar as he came jumping off. That was great. However, he tried to, like, murder him, though. It was like, he tried to, like, stab him. Stabby. 
with the uh good, with the guitar part here but there we go stab 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 with the wooden guitar part and somehow electrocuted himself when he rammed it into the amplifier note to wwe scientists wood does not conduct electricity i can see where it would obviously break the equipment and might the speaker itself might spark up it's not going to electrocute lies unless i want to say the only metal things on a guitar really are the strings Elias just has to be the unluckiest person in the world to get electrocuted by guitar strings that's just weak um then eventually the, the bass guitar gets involved it, um, all the instruments get get involved. Yeah, it was okay. Um, actually, it was pretty good. It's actually a, a pretty decent blow. And what I hope I hope it's the blow off. I'm probably going to give it a higher rating than it should. For the most part, this was a cheeseburger match. So yeah, it was kind of cartoonish, but I like cartoonish stuff anyway. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Jeff Hardy also did a stack of violins. He tried to swent on. That was pretty cool. Uh, then there was a Retribution promo. No. Uh, next match, we had Ricochet versus Casey Jones. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean Slapjack. Um, Slapjack, he, he takes it right to Ricochet. I'll give him that much. Uh, Ricochet, he gets very easily distracted by the other two. gets pulled off the ring. Uh, Ricochet he did hit that rolling dropkick, which is pretty good. Um, he also sent Slapjack into Retribution, and then he decides to do the dive onto all of them. Very classic Ricochet. I still don't know why they're having him job out the, so much. Um, and like the next thing I remember, Dana Brooke came out and slapped Ali. Oh, that looked like it had some stank on it too. Uh, Slapjack does like some side Russian suplex thing, which actually looked pretty cool. Looked very judo-ish. Um, Slapjack wins, and I was shocked. I'm like, Slapjack? Of all people, Casey Jones, the smallest one of the bunch, besides Mustafa Ali wins? I was confused for a second. But you know what? Um, Ricochet lost again. He job Ricochet job to Slapjack. That was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have Miz TV. Uh, Sheamus is on. Um, for the most part, John Morrison beats up Sheamus. Sheamus tries to make a comeback. Miz smacks Sheamus over the head with the Money in the Bank briefcase. That, of course, brings out Drew McIntyre to save his good buddy. So, yeah. And then we had a women's tag team recap. Uh, Asuka and Lana from last week. And now we have, now we have a rematch. I'll tell you what. This one was actually a little bit better than the last one because now they're trying to give lana a little push they're saying thank you lana we've gotten all of the abuse out of our system we now want to thank you for all of your wonderful service to the wwe that's kind of what it felt like uh so oscar and lana take on nia jackson shannon baszler i'm kind of surprised this wasn't for the belts either that's what it really should have been lana starts off classic wrestling move drop toe hold standard drop toe hold it's a wrestling move. It works pretty good. Uh, from there into a crucifix pin, Shayna just like says, no, I'm not having this, this anymore. One knee drops Lana. Lana eventually tags Asuka. She, she, she middle bridges Nia Jax. Is Nia Jax really that short where she could be middle bridged? I, I know, I know the, the low bridge is a top rope. The middle, I guess I'm, yeah. Yeah, low bridge is the top rope, so I guess you got middle bridge because it was the middle rope. I don't even know what would have. I don't even know what you'd call the. It would be a bottom bridge, either river bottom, I guess, or even beneath the the bottom rope would be the river bottom. Indeed. Then. Yeah, you have the double. Oh, this was a great spot. Uh, that Asuka and Lana tried for the double dive onto, onto Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler. Uh, Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler respectively catch uh, Sha um, Lana. 
I almost said Sean. No, Lana and Asuka and just begin laughing. Laugh, 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 against them against the barricade. That's a great looking spot though. Um, Caveman Barberio does that too. That's He does some cool stuff. I miss, I miss AAA. I think, there's all, I think there was also an announcement where there's going to be, where like, they're like, nope. Triple Mania is done with until like next year, which sucks. There was always that hope that it would show up. No. No. Even though I will keep on double checking every so often. Triple Mania was one of my highest rated shows. And I'd like to thank you, my YouTube audience, for making it such. Because without you guys, I don't even know where I'd be right now. I'd be still picking up cans in a ditch somewhere. Probably collecting tin, too. Not just aluminum. But yeah. Again, oh, then. Jeez. Now I kick Lon in the... Um, back, in, back in the ring, now he begins to kick Lon a little bit in the ribs. Uh, chokes on the ropes. Kind of classic heel stuff. And then, ouch. The way that Shayna sent Lana uh, heads... The way that, yeah, Shayna knees Lana. And then that ankle. Oh, no, it was the way Shayna bends. It's not even a step over its old. She just, like, like sat on her knee and, like, torqued it. Oh, I have a bad knee, folks. I was feeling that a little bit that night. But, yeah, and then that ankle stop. Uh, Nia Jax tries to run. She, uh, she gets sent to the post on the outside. Then there was a blind tag. It was a little weird blind tag too. I don't know. Just in it just seemed that it seemed forced. It's like, okay, I have to make this tag. Like, come over here, Lana. Tag. It was <sighs> Lana still has a lot of work to do in ring. She is getting better, but she has a lot of work to do though. In order to be smooth like Asuka. And even Shannon Baszler is pretty smooth. Nijax, eh. She has her moments. Not too often, though. Oops. Then, yeah, Asuka hit the flying drop kick. And then the hip attack, that's always good to see. Lana tossed herself. Cross body into Shayna. Shayna caught her. Um, put in, uh, actually, Shana, uh, Lana did the cross body. Shayna rolled into the rear naked choke. Um, Asuka's knee, <laughs> Shayna in the back of the head. Lana gets the pin. One, two, three. Asuka and Lana win. Again, what I think what I put down is that this needs to be a tables match at TLC either the 13th or 20th. Only way, only way this blow-off works if it's a tables match and Lana goes through a table. Or there's Hubris and Nia Jax goes through a table. That would be pretty cool. Again, overall, for the most part, it was a good cheese, it was a good cheeseburger of a match. And there's a little bit about Drew and Sheamus uh, backstage again, the history that they had that they shared together. Then the next match was Xavier Woods taking on Cedric Alexander. Cedric's is still kind of hot. <sighs> a little bit that he keeps on losing. Um, this was actually a real. Um, it wasn't a bad match for these two individuals. It's kind of a snooze fest because you kind of seen all their same tag team moves now just into. A singles match, it wasn't bad. I mean, just not much to say. I mean, I, uh, a lot of times it was a good, it was a very good back and forth between Xavier Woods and Cedric. It was good. Um, Cedric again beats up Woods to start. Woods he throws the chops, forearm shivers were great. Um, he also did the honor roll, whatever that move. Uh, yeah, the honor roll. Uh, Cedric then come back. Oh, he had a brain buster. Listen, anytime I see a match with a brain buster, you know it's something good. You know, I'll rant and rave about it. Uh, then a little bit more back and forth. Cedric hits a lumbar check. After a Woods miscue, that was really good. Cedric Alexander wins. Cedric Alexander is, yes, I'm, I'm the man. As he walks down the ramp without the hurt business. Um, poor Shelton Benjamin and MVP are just like, hey, they wanted to celebrate their, and Shelton ben, and um, Cedric Alexander just left him hanging. Yeah, this was a fun match, though. It was a good cheeseburger match.
And then a little bit of the triple threat that's going to go on. Um, again, Matt Riddle was talking to Keith Lee. Matt Riddle is just like, stone, bro. Uh, so there's Riddle and AJ. And roll with Keith Lee before. This, of course, led up to the triple threat match. Keith Lee versus Matt Riddle. They need to keep their first names like that. And AJ Styles. I just can't see, see AJ being called AJ or just being called Styles. Doesn't make any sense. And Riddle? Nah. You're not bat. Only I can fight Batman Ryan Bane. Also known. No, I am Bane, because I wore the Bane mask in Retribution, where I shall fight Batman. And you, Riddle, you are just a crown, even more so than the Joker was. Yes, for I am Bane. Bane voice is still pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this was a fun match. For the most part, it was Keith Lee versus Matt Riddle. AJ Styles would get involved here and there. But AJ Styles is the opportunistic veteran. Remember, age or experience and deviousness always overcomes youth and exuberance. Yeah, age, age and experience always overcomes youth and exuberance. It's just the way things go. As you get older, the body breaks down. I know it's very true for football players. When you, when you start football, you have very little experience, but, but you can athletically do anything. However, over time, and your body, your physicalness goes down, and if you're really good, your experience goes up, and there's some point where, yeah, you can still do stuff, not the way you used to, but you have a little bit more, more wisdom. You know how to do stuff. Treachery. You can, you can, be, you can pick your spots. Eventually, again, there's going, to, there's going to be some disparity here. Eventually, the body says no, the mind says yes. Body always wins. Remember, Father Time is undefeated. So yeah, um, yeah, I can do this again. Uh, Lee, he back body drops AJ. AJ goes flying. <laughs> you can actually watch AJ literally tuck and roll in the air. That was so amazing. Um, then a quick exchange. But all three, real, you know, he's on moving styles. That run, that runs the ropes. That was great. Uh, Lee hits a splash on Matt Riddell in the corner. Then he goes, hits AJ in the other corner. AJ's kind of out for a while. Lee has that, which kind of worries me a little bit. He has a very Shibata-esque headbutt. Just that Shibata, that's not really a good thing to have. Uh, Lee uses Matt as a weapon and, and whaps. Laps AJ Styles. Sons AJ Styles flying. It's always great. Matt on his forearms. And he of course AJ Styles goes into the into the corner. And that's and the reason he got whapped is because Matt was trying trying to first standing triangle. Not gonna work. Um uh, Matt Riddle does the forearms into each in the corner. He gets pounced. Um, AJ Styles again, all the strikes to Lee. There was a near Tower of Doom, Doom setup. Thank God there wasn't, because that would have been very bad, probably for everyone involved. Because Matt Riddle was on the bottom, Keith Lee was on the top rope. AJ Styles was going to take the fall. That was just going to end poorly for everyone. I, I fear. Um, AJ Styles got cost, got tossed into Matt Riddle. That was great, and Keith Lee just so strong. He did some like amazing suplex. I don't even know what it was called. But AJ is opportunistic. When Keith Lee and Matt Riddle collided a little bit, AJ Styles catches Riddle with a phenomenal forearm. Keith Lee was out of the ring. AJ Styles picks up the win. That was a really good match. I'll tell you what, this was a surf and turf match. AJ Styles, he can carry on forever. And then we have a Miz and Morrison segment. Yeah, that was that was okay. It is what it was. Um, nothing really much to say about that. They're just they're planning AJ's they they give AJ Styles a pie, they want him to help out. It's like, ooh, pie. I like pie. Peach pie. I've never had 
Then we have Dana Brooke versus, versus Reckoning. Reckoning needs a different mask. Because it fell off. Obviously it's Mia Yim. Uh, Miss Hannibal Lecter. But this match was way too quick. Like Dana Brooke's not that good where she's going to have squash matches against Mia Yim. It, like, I could understand Dana Brooke winning if it was a good seven-minute match. I don't think this match took three minutes. If you want to bring up Mia Yim, knowing her caliber of wrestling, this is not the way to do it. Um, this match was a piece of toast. Then Matt Riddell just makes a dumb mistake of going to the Hurt Business saying, Yo, bro, I got ideas, man. I found a way to smell colors and to hear textures. It's so cool. I mean, your suits are, they're so low, man. Yeah. Uh, the Hurt Business had nothing to do with that. He got stuck in the Hurt Lock. Hurt Lock, eventually, he'll be challenging for the U.S. belt. And I'm okay with that. Um, then we had Seamus and Keith Lee. A little bit in the background, Keith Lee said, Don't you turn on Drew. What's it to you, fella? Um, then, and the main event of the evening? I understand now why this is the main event of the evening. That triple threat was so much better, though. This was okay. Uh, it was Drew versus Sh Drew and Sheamus, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus taking on the Miz and Morrison. I mean, they actually allowed Morrison to get some offense in, which I'm kind of happy about. Uh, again, he's amazing. He was doing a little bit of his parkour stuff. Miz is a great wrestler in all his respects. Uh, Sheamus really just took the beating for most of the match. Drew McIntyre would come in, get his spots in, Sheamus would tag. And it was pretty good until AJ Styles interfered. I'm like, why is AJ Styles interfering? But remember, earlier, AJ Styles says he wants to face The Miz. He thinks he'll have an easier match against The Miz versus Andrew McIntyre. AJ Styles is right. So AJ Styles interferes. Uh, Miz and Morrison wind up losing by DQ. The death, death, finish, baby. Nobody wins. But the redeeming part of this match is that John Morrison, Johnny Mundo, was finally allowed to hit Starship Pain. Oh, if I ever tried to do Starship Pain, I'd dislocate a shoulder, separate vertebrae, and probably pull a groin muscle somehow. I don't even know how I'd pull a groin muscle doing Starship Pain, but it would happen anyway. And maybe stub my toe. Yeah. It's definitely definitely, I would stub my toe. Um, Miz hit the squad crushing finale. AJ was talking so much junk. He's like, here, cash in, cash in, Miz. Like, Miz is like, oh, this is mine. I'll cash in when I want to. Um, eventually, everyone beats up AJ a little bit. AJ gets carried out. AJ Styles is such a wily vet. He has all the charisma. Wait. AJ Styles, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um, for what it was, just because I saw Starship Pain, it was a cheeseburger of a main event. And overall, can't complain about the show. It was a decent cheeseburger of a show. But wait, my calendar says it's Wednesday. But wait a second, or this show will be going up Thursday. You know what that means? Let's say. And let's talk about some AEW next. And again, as I start off every show that I do, um, I have some thank yous to give out. Pixie Carter. Holy shit.
Buddha. You, sir, just like Jordan, you probably have some back. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And Sunny Kiss Booty, you, um, he or she, is that luchador on a four. left. So with AEW, AEW starts off with the Diamond Ring Battle Royal. Um, I think I got in, I think I was just loading things up as they started, so I think some people got tossed out. Um, I'll go through a little bit of the action. So here the inner circles are there in the form of Sammy Guevara, Wardlow and MJF, so they're represented there. A um, bunch of other people are there too. Um, Inner Circle, they just kind of like chill out. They're like, oh, I'm going to put my hands on the ropes, sit down. I'm going to relax. Wardlow, watch over things, make sure they don't bug us. Sammy, how are you doing, Sammy? How's your girlfriend? Oh, my girlfriend's great. How's your girlfriend doing, MJF? Eh, she's okay. You know how it is. She likes the fact that I wear this diamond ring a lot, but she wants one. Really? That's cool. My girlfriend just appreciates my abs. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they were talking about. They were just like, you could just see their mouths moving when they would sit there. You'd be like, yeah. Like, do we... For some reason, these battle royals in AEW, a lot of people just tend to do nothing. They really do, like, go into the corners and let, like, two people spotlight themselves. And the spotlight, for the most part, was Miro, because Miro eliminated a lot of people. So I will, with, on that note, I shall start off with the eliminations. Uh, Matt Seidel, well, when I joined in, Matt Seidel was, as far as I know, first eliminated, then Sean Spears, Scorpio Sky, got booed out, Reynolds got knocked out by Silver, who got tossed up by someone else, Adam Page then got eliminated. <sighs> I wonder what they're going to do, well, well, we'll see. Uh, Adam Page got eliminated, Kip Sabian got tossed out, Lee Johnson, who, what's, what's, how did that jobbery get in this? They should have the one, the only Hobo Tom. Yeah, I could join MJF. I'd be as, like, super lackey. And he'd pay me and, like, probably, like, throw, tossing a ham sandwich at me. Hmm. Ham sandwiches are, are good. Well, they're better than stuff, but... Um, Matt Quinn got tossed out, then Jeff Hardy was, was, was eliminated... Jungle Boy got tossed by Wardlow. Sammy Guevara got eliminated by Wardlow a little bit because of a bad bump. Uh, Orange Cassidy got back in the ring. Orange Cassidy elimin eliminated Wardlow. So next week, uh, the person who's who's going to win, and I hope the guy's on Orange Cassidy. He wouldn't know what to do with a freaking diamond ring like that. But next week's match, so this sets up. MJF versus Orange Cassidy next week. Uh, some of the action that, that went on, again, the inner circle was there. Miro kept saving. They, they double teamed, just wanted to beat up Orange Cassidy. Uh, the Dark Order, they actually caught Hangman and Page. The Hangman and Page didn't get eliminated the first time, eventually did. Uh, Joey Janela, I don't know what's wrong with him. Like, he got soup. He got, um, 
released German suplex and like he sent him the way he took his bump he went like head first right into the middle of turnbuckle and I know those turnbuckle pads are like soft cushy pillows or well, if you can see right now they're probably like soft warm kitty bellies but you don't want to necessarily send yourself head first into it because there is steel underneath that and the force he uses I don't know uh, then the then the new inner circle, uh, Miro's Miro like eliminates like all like six or seven people. They team up on Miro. Eventually, M Miro versus Wardlow was great, and Power versus Power. That's always good to see. MJF and Guevara. They kind of he they get beat up by Miro because they they try to hold down Miro. Miro just argh, hulks out. Takes all three of them to throw him over the rope. Miro eventually does that. Then winds up to be Jungle Boy and Sammy Guevara, where they do flippy stuff very dangerously and precariously on the apron of the ring. Um, Orange Cassidy comes in, Orange punches uh, Wardlow. Wardlow goes, eventually sends Wardlow out, or, and then, then will he also Orange punch MJF? Wardlow eventually gets gets tossed out, gets um, eliminated. By orange cat, by kind of like a weird miscue thing, even though Wardlow did save MJ from elimination, which was really good to see. Um, overall, it was a battle royal. A lot of people were just like standing around doing nothing. Yeah, it's a ham sandwich. Then we had Frankie Kazarian taking on Chris Jericho. This is really good. It starts off fast and furious. Frankie Kazarian's just upset at the whole inner circle. So they start like literally trading bl blows. Like the crowd starts off, yay, boo, yay, boo. Um, and then when Chris Jericho hit a delayed vertical suplex, which always looks impressive, uh, Kaz tried to backslide his clothesline and flying forearm. Kaz is, Kaz is so great. He's old too. Man, he's in amazing shape. He, he over didn't miss a drop kick. Um, and when he fell to the ring, Chris Jericho went up for a line assault, but no, he has that move well scouted, gets his knees up, then hits a leg drop, and then the inner circles the whole, on the whole time the outside of the ring to act as a distraction. Um, eventually, this was a common theme. Kaz, Kazarian would get a couple of moves on Chris Jericho. All of a sudden, he kind of look around, see himself surrounded, or um, one member of the inner circle would jump up in the ring. Uh, MJF came down with a towel. He was going to throw the towel in. For some reason, when Jericho was in the line tamer, because Kazarian used that on him, um, people were like booing him. Sammy Guevara is going absolutely bonkers. Um, and there's this total confusion within the inner circle. Eventually, Kaz gets distracted by all that, walks into a Judas effect. Chris Jericho picks up the win. Eh. It's a cheeseburger match. Then Sammy Guevara and MJF, they just start shoving each other. Yeah. You have to go 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 in the yard, boys, and take care of your business. Um then the hybrid two jump the young bucks. That's good to see. At least the hybrid two at least Jack Evans and Angelico are getting some kind of a push. Thank you, Tony Khan. Thank you very much. Oh, and then we went to Britt Baker versus legit Layla Hirsch. Legit Layla Hirsch is actually actually shows some legit moves. Um, she starts off by first getting Britt Baker into an arm breaker, um, then getting classic collegiate wrestling again, folk style, uh, very collegiate style, in um, AAU wrestling with you have uh, either Greco Roman or freestyle, freestyle uh, international people call it folk style. It's collegiate wrestling. And she has that whole background. It's always good to see that. Again, gets in the Juju Katami. It's great. Um, Britt kicked her in the face and then hit a DDT. I don't know. Britt Baker just doesn't do it for me. Granted, she has an amazingly clean crotch area. Oops. Yeah, I saw. I, I, I looked there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. She has terrible knees. Like, you could tell, like, her knees are, like, at least four to six inches away. And granted, legit Layla's probably just, like, saying, oh, knee coming. 
let me do this. Bird doesn't help her cause by by like she like just stops too. There's no follow through. Like again, you can kind of glance. Again, like go from closed fist and just glance, and not like really potato someone. You can kind of. Oh yeah. I mean, you can glance, uh, or uh, how was that was shown? You punch. Oh. oh, oh, you hit like the neck, like the fatty part of the neck. I don't know. Britt Baker. People say she's a great heel. I'm not convinced of it yet. I just want to see Thunder Rosa rip her apart. I don't know why. I just want to see Britt Baker bleed. I don't see her. Not even Candice LeRae like, oh my gosh, she's bleeding. It's like, good. She deserves to bleed. She deserves to get Abdullah the Fork butchered bleed job. <sighs> Whoa. Where'd that come from? Um, yeah, the knees were terrible. Britt tried. Uh, something on uh, Layla. Layla not having any of it. Oh, yeah, she tried to pose with Layla. Yeah, Layla was not having any of it. Just kind of like slaps her right flat in the tits. That was funny. Um, Layla sends... Uh, Britt sends Layla, Layla into the post. Layla has a crossbody. Uh, Rebel gets involved. <laughs> she gets nailed for her half. It's poor, poor Rebel. And, and why is Rebel like trying to interfere, but yet... In, not doing a very good job of it because the referee is distracted. Britt Baker doesn't know what she's doing. Eventually, Britt Baker hits the lockjaw on Legit Layla Hirsch. Um, not to the fault of Legit Layla Hirsch. Britt Baker won in a terrible match. Um, the only the only reason why this match is not a kin is not a piece of toast is because Thunder Rosa and got her receipts in. That was the best part of the match. Rebel tried to cheap shot her. Lay Layla saved that. Yeah, that was a can of soup. Then we have the Team Taz recap. Team Taz is still probably the best thing going on. Um, then it was Darby Allen and Cody Rose taking on Ricky Starks and Will Hobbs. This was actually really good. Um, again, the heels jump, the faces, very classic start to the match. Starks takes the brunt of the punishment from both Darby Allen and Cody Rhodes. They kind of isolate him for a while. Um, when they get to, when Darby tries to do something running on the outside, Hobbs takes him out with a clothesline. Hobbs just looks like a beast. He looks like a black Taz. He looks freaking amazing. And the orange and the orange and black really suits Hobbs really well, especially that that classic Taz singlet. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. Oh, wow, that's it. Have I really talked about this stuff? Wow. Um, yeah. Hobbs, again, he gets in the ring. Again, that delayed vertical suplex on Darby Allen. That can't be hard. I'm pretty sure I could do that, too. I mean, I did that to my nephews. They probably weigh just as much as Darby Allen does. Oh, wait a second. You know what? Oh, I forgot to show my true colors here, folks. I almost forgot about this. Ugh. There we go. And I broke my camera doing it too. So that's okay. Um, yeah. Again, when it's time to talk about AEW, the AEW shirt must go on. So let's see. Where was I? It was um, the Young Looks. Yeah, this video is going to be all kinds of wonky too. But that's okay. I just realized, like, anything weird my camera sees, it doesn't exactly process right away. Oh, well, for Christmas, hopefully things get better. Maybe. Uh, yeah, Hob uh, overheads Darby Allen by the ears. An overhead ear toss. That just looked vicious. Again, Hobbs is such a beast. Cody gets a hot tag. Um... 
he gets his comeback until he gets eye gouged after distraction by both Arn Anderson, who got up on the ramp, and Taz, who got up on the apron. Uh, Cody eventually hits the Cody Cutter. He takes out poor Ricky Starks. Um, Darby Allen took out Will Hobbs on the outside. Smart thing. Well, actually, uh, after Cody has the Cody Cutter, Cody then takes Cody then takes out Will Hobbs. Uh, Darby Allen again got the blind tag in. Does a coffin drop onto Ricky Starks. Darby Allen and Cody Rhodes wins. It was a good cheeseburger of a match. Then Arn tries to get involved. Yeah, that's a really bad idea. Um, Hobbs beats up. He's very upset that he lost. Arn tries to get involved. He, he gets kicked for his efforts. Dustin made this. Dustin comes in for the save. Brian Cage shows up. And then Sting shows up. Wow. Sting's really going <laughs> to... Wait a second. I've seen this angle before. Where was it? I think I remember an inebriated Jeff Hardy and Sting. Oh, what, what wrestling? Oh no, that was TNA. We'll get to that in, in, in a second. And then we have Hikaru Shida um, conducting an interview. Uh, it was okay. Uh, she has to face Abaddon. Abaddon's like the female version of Sue Young and The Undertaker, I guess, in AEW. We'll see how that goes. Not well. <laughs> and then we have the main event, John Moxley and Kenny Omega. Kind of a classic match. I actually upgraded this just because of the ending, and I'll get into why I updated it. Well, as you can tell in the title. But a classic start to the match. Uh, Mox tries... Then his to go for his choke. Uh, Omega goes for the chin lock. Pretty classic start to the match. Um, now they go to the outside. This obviously favors John Moxley, and it's just the front area. All the somewhat expensive seats were actually I I kind of sat close to once. Where there's no fans there anymore. Social distancing. I do have to get to one of those events. I have to bring Susie to that event one day. Uh, I wonder how close we could get. That should be fun though. I don't even care if she drinks. I probably. Let her drink. I'd probably drink too. Yeah, one day. When is uh, New Year's Eve? Is not Wednesday. Okay. Where if I have off New Year's Day? I'll ask that stupid question later. Ask a question to be asked for work. And I know Chief, but I'm going to bed soon. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Maybe I should do that, too. The bookshelf looks all empty. I got distracted. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so then they come back in. Kenny Omega has the dragon screw leg, leg whips and the ropes on Mox. Again, the, the ropes add a little bit of extra torque. And they do some EA boost and back and forth stuff. Mox has a paradigm shift. There's a belt on the, on the outside. Mox brings chairs into ring. He sits down in the chair. He, he motions to Kenny Omega to sit down, and they literally have, and I don't know, I don't know if he wants to get killed by Minoru Suzuki, because I'll tell you what, Mox is just taunting Minoru Suzuki over there in New Japan Pro Wrestling, because he sits in the chair, and they do a trade of blows, a la Minoru Suzuki stylish, uh, like whenever Minoru Suzuki fights, um, when he had his matches with Shibata, or uh, Ishii, no, not Ishii. Maybe it was Ishii, the Stone Cold Pitbull. Whenever they would have just their, oh my god, I can't believe these men are going to walk away and have a beer later. Like, literally, a Minoru Suzuka Ishii match looks like a shoot fight from, like, I guess a Japanese, like, fight club. It's near terrifying because you know someone, someone's going down and they're going to go down hard. In fact, if John Moxley tries this with Minoru Suzuki, John Moxley is going to go down, and he's going to go down hard. Um, then it's a uh, V trigger to a to double snap dragon suplex. Mox kicks out. Uh, Mox says, um, "Well, he didn't kick out, but then he reverses that into a released German suplex." And he comes back from that with a V trigger. 
This is getting old. The fact that you can hit these like finisher moves and multiple of them and people still kick out. A Mox hit his Lariat, his King Kongish Lariat. And you did like a freaking Paradigm Driver. That should have like just broken the neck of Kenny Omega. But I guess, I wonder if John Moxley misses how many times he can drop me on the back of my neck matches in New Japan. I think Kenny Omega does. Um, that was Mox missed a dive. Omega tried for a one angel, did not hit that. John Moxley drove uh, 12 6 elbows. And then it was a repeated V trigger and a Wilbro plex. Moxley got down. Um, Kenny Omega then hit the ripcord V trigger, the, the V trigger rainmaker. And then hit the one wing angel. And then Don Moxley got to the ring. Um, actually, yeah, Don uh, Don Callis came to ringside, and uh, of course Moxley had a kick out of the one wing angel that was unexpected. Don Callis comes to ringside. He has a mic mainly because Kenny Omega got sent into, into a heater on the outside. Moxley doesn't care. Callis has a mic in his hand. Don Callis throws the mic into the ring. Kenny Omega catches it. <laughs> nails John Moxley with it and of all the things that these two have been doing to each other and everything we've seen from the WWE it takes one mic shot and John Moxley's like busted wide open blood flowing all over his face from one mic shot really um, I was going to give uh, and then of course Kenny Omega wins he wins the belt mainly because of Don Callis' interference Tony Chajami is like, bullshit! I can't believe this bullshit! This is bullshit! That was so good. But then, so Kenny Omega's leaving the building. People are booing him. Why, Kenny? Why? Why? Um, eventually, Don Cal says, I'll tell you guys on Tuesday. Wait a second. Tuesday? That's Impact Wrestling. Are we going to see Kenny Omega on Impact Wrestling? Wow. I think, and this is pure conjecture. Well, well, you know what? Just because Don Callis like, teased being on Tuesday Impact, which is my Tuesday, Tuesday Soup Day Wrestling show. So, you know, I'm going to be watching that show extra carefully. That Tuesday, I don't care what I, I don't care what I'm not doing that day. I'm watching Impact, just because Don Callis said that, and the way Kenny Omega won. You know what? This was a flaming yawn match. And oh, I want to see that too. That looks so cool. I actually saw the backstage area. That's kind of like the outside. I've actually been there because that's the good parking lot. If you have the $50 parking pass, you can go. Um, I think what's going on is, and this is pure conjecture on my part. I have no, I have absolutely no clue about the whole process and or way wrestling booking works. Um, I have absolutely zero clue. Zero clue about what goes on in those booking meetings. But I think because of COVID-19 and the way, I don't even think the way the WWE has been handling stuff, but because the numbers for AEW and Impact I mean, AEW is pretty consistent. It's it's kind of right. It's like AEW is here, NXT is there, WWE is up there, and Impact's down there. I wonder if AEW and an Impact, mainly because Impact, let's be honest, has a really small roster size. If they have some kind of working agreement, where okay, we'll we'll show Kenny into your area, as long as you give him like like superstar like super amazing star Hulk Hogan status. And then 
Impact in return says, okay, well, you're going to have these battle royals. You need people. We have we have people. We have an amazing woman's division. We'll, we'll trade you a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll show up to your shows. I hope it's not some stupid invasion angle. Please, I hope not. Oh, pretty please, I hope not. Mainly, I just think it's AEW and Impact trying to take a little bit of the market share away. And I am by no means a freaking market analysis person. I hear numbers like all the time. And I know numbers I understand at work, like the one job when they start saying all these acronyms, I have no clue what they're talking about. So I do not know the inner workings, but it seems like there's going to be some collaborative effort. Um, Impacts obviously changed management. They're obviously more open to working with others, which is good. They've worked with uh, CMLL and AAA in the past. They've, they've kind of very slowly rebuilt their relationship with New Japan. Every so often you'll see New Japan wrestlers uh, come, show up to Impact. They had uh, the Bone Soldier show up once um there are some impact wrestlers going to japan for part of the super j cup maybe they're saying hey listen the wwe is too big for us to survive if if we're in this if we're in this territory like we are here literally like aew is literally in in florida so aew is here um TNA might be in Canada. I honestly don't know. New Japan's obviously out here in the Pacific. They're saying, hey, there's just not enough talent for us. That Let's share. Let's make this work. Because WWE has everyone. Let's be honest about that. So we'll definitely see what happens. And with that, you know what? This was a good cheeseburger show. And because I ranted in rave, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Uh, tomorrow we'll have Dr. Tom do his predictions for War Games. And I'll see everyone probably Friday when I talk about some SmackDown. Take care, everyone. Bye.